Hi. Okay. So I want to introduce you to our guest today, Simon Yan. Did I get that right? Yes. Thank All you. All right. Simon is the condo condo king. Uh, Simon has a real incredible niche in the uh, in the real estate world. He flips condos. So let's dig into it. Simon, how are you doing today? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Hi from Toronto here. Oh, excellent. So, so tell me about your real estate journey. How, how did you get first to get involved in real estate? Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> I got to borrow some fingers here. Um, <laughs> it's probably like 25 years ago that I started my real estate investing journey. Back then, I'm, I'm like a lot of people uh, investing into uh, uh, pre-construction apartment buildings and whatnot, like buying one, two, three, and uh, kind of accumulating your portfolio back then. And over the years, I start uh, doing uh, flipping houses, uh, just kind of go in and do a renovations, live here for a few years, like many have done. And I thought, okay, I have some experience under my wing, per se. And then uh, uh, I venture into uh, starting my general contracting business. And uh, it has been 10 years, and uh, we started from nothing to now we have like a 25,000 square feet warehouse and and a stable renovation business and uh, that's kind of how it all started and last couple years really really kind of i'm sick of like looking at just making my kind rich and so i have to seriously investing into real estate on top of my i would consider uh previously i was, I was leisurely investing in real estate now i'm seriously uh uh, investing in real estate, doing following the bra strategy in multifamily, and then call, one interesting point I think the, what leads to um, the condo flipping concept here is that I actually do, I've been doing that for the last decades on a daily basis. So over the over this period of time, I literally have renovated thousands of uh, condo apartments units um, during wow. this period of time, and I, I I didn't think about it before, and then. One day, uh, um, there was opportunity for me to do a presentation and start putting it down, putting the ideas down onto uh, PowerPoints. And then I go, holy cow, like, what do I get here, right? And then uh, I now feel very obligated to uh, uh, share this knowledge and help as many uh, real estate investors as I can. Um, that's kind of where my real estate journey is. Well, uh, I saw your presentation when I was in uh, Toronto at that real estate conference we both attended, and I was blown away by your presentation and some of the success you've had. And I'm really looking forward to uh, that course you're putting together uh, to teach other people how to, how to flip condos. So um, we'll put a link in our description here if it's out, and if not, we'll uh, put, put some contact information. So when it does come out uh, sometime the end of this year, We'll uh, we'll make sure our uh, followers can can access that. So when it comes to selecting a condo for a flip, or just walk me through a typical flip, but specifically, like what areas are you typically looking for? The biggest biggest uh, uh, thing that I'm looking for is that this you gotta buy. It's like any real estate property that you acquire in uh, in your investing is that you gotta find something that is under market value. And the best type I find that in the condo flipping context is that you want to see a very rundown apartment units or condo units in that sense. The worse it looks, the better your results it's going to be. Um, so if you see like the decor in the 60s, so like you have the green carpet, the pink carpet, a leaking shower, um, the, the, the doors in the cabinet in the kitchen is falling off. Um, those are the best type. And then you've got a granny wallpaper around the units. Those, those are the best type of uh, opportunity from my experience. And is it mostly uh, stuff, condos that are listed for sale or, or are you, you finding these before they're listed? Uh, how, do you, how do you find the condos? Uh, with the volume that I do, I actually do not discriminate in the sense that I come, I acquire them from all sources. I mean, like even in the last few um, acquisitions that I've done in the past month, um, I, some are from off-market, some are on MLS, some are from referral, right? So, so, so that's a, a, it's really, really you build your network 
uh, and build uh, your reputation in this space and people will come to you eventually um, and then you will be able to acquire enough for your plan that you set out to do in terms of the number of units that you want to do. And, and so is it just Toronto you're looking for looking at or do you Mississauga like Brampton how, how far do you venture from uh, from downtown? I mostly I would say 90% focus on greater Toronto area that would include uh, uh, Mississauga area like that I mean but I think the farthest I would go would be Hamilton, uh, uh, Aurora, Oshawa type of uh, spears there like within one hour of GTA pretty much um, but that said if the opportunity is uh, good enough then it doesn't stop me from uh, the, dis the distance doesn't stop me per se um, that said I want to add to that particular point in in terms of if the city has um, decent populations let's say 50,000 and more and you can see there is a a transactional liquidity that means like there are selling and buying um, transactions in that through your MLS or through your comparable research then this strategy will work in any city in that front uh, from that perspective excellent okay so so walk me through a um, let's say you, you find a, a condo for sale uh, it's, it's you know look looks terrible which look the, the worse the better I guess uh, doesn't look great. Walk walk me through the, the the buying process and typical renovation. What would you what would you do to a? I know everyone's different, but like, what would be a, a common uh, renovation you would do? I think first of all the 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 way I I I share with my student is that okay when you look at a opportunity, look at a unit unit a condo unit. You want to find something that's below market average, first of all, that's what you want to see. And secondly, you want to see comparable that show the after repair value. The ARV is actually about 150000 to 200000 um, difference between your purchase price and the after repair value price. Um, so that would be the first thing that I would uh, recommend my students to uh, look for in any city, in any apartments uh, from that standpoint. Uh, in terms of renovations, I think I would firmly remind one key aspect is that you are renovating for your potential clients. You're not renovating for yourself, for your own personal liking or preference or design style in that sense. You, you are completely should be focusing on catering towards your potential buyer. What do I mean by that is that if that neighborhood is catered more towards a senior living, then you got to custom your renovations towards that client pool. If it were more youngster, and then you have to do adjust your strategy differently. So, so remember, it's not about what you like or what you don't like. It's about what your clients like, and uh, that is uh, very number one key. Uh, renovation wise I would say that uh, about uh, fifty to seventy thousand dollars would be a comfortable range in terms of budgeting for your renovations this is assuming that you're doing it with a general contractor or alike in a sense um, obviously it needs to be a general contractor that has uh, experience working with uh, uh, condo buildings apartment buildings because there are a lot of subtleties in terms of working with uh, with uh, condos and bu apartment buildings in the sense that like the working hours, the use of the elevator, the, the use of the garbage, the handling of the garbage and all that kind of small subtlety that you don't have when you're going to a residential house that you're going to renovate with. So but those are the, some of the key factors. Um, and in addition to that is some of my students, they have like a, a handy experience or they have like contact with uh, various trade in the renovations then they might have a slight advantage in terms of uh, cost saving from the budget that I just mentioned to you uh, earlier here okay so so like a typical renovation new floors new bathroom paint fix the cupboards uh, like what would be a typical typical one you'd do Great questions there, and I think I got asked a lot with that questions from my uh, pool of students in the sense that 
you should I my rule of thumb this if you're not sure replace it if you're not sure whether you should keep this item I would say replace it that would be it, it actually takes away a question marks or question marks from your potential buyers because uh, everything's brand new everything is uh, uh, completely top-notch uh, it's all renewed in a sense that they have they give them like a peace of mind so that in the next 10 5 10 15 years they don't have to worry about that fridge is going to work or not going to work they're not going to worry about that faucet is going to leak or not going to leak they're not worrying about that toilet is going to um, give me trouble uh, in, in, in whatever sense because everything is brand new uh, the, the washer dryer is brand new and the flooring is brand new so so because you don't want your potential buyers to walk in and oh this is all beautiful and this one piece of thing is kind of looks old to me like what's going on here right and, in, and then and then when they are competing with an offer to buy your property that last five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars that they might be able to get up uh, in the price on their offer will not be there so so this is not a place to chip out uh, in my opinion so so you gotta i would say that if in doubt replace it so if in doubt replace it but don't make it don't make it too nice unless you're really in an a uh, a building but make it make it suitable make it look great but you don't need to be putting granite countertops in every single renovation. That's right. That's right. I think uh, the key is really through experience and through proven style in design uh, that works uh, from the past um, and just kind of reusing that um, elements that has shown you success. Um, don't try to, because I oftentimes see some people uh, like to try to reinvent the wheel in every project that they do. Um, then uh, it's a waste of time and money in a lot of ways. I would recommend that to focus on maybe one or two things in each of the projects as you continue to evolve with the design plan and design style that's uh, trendy currently in the marketplace and trendy uh, for your potential buyer. But sometimes I would enable allow them to say, okay, maybe one thing, um, maybe an accent wall here, maybe a fireplace there, to kind of differentiate from it, but I say majority over ninety percent of it can be uh, reused uh, work. What design that has worked successfully in the past? Okay, so you you, you mentioned um, doing your research. So, what kind of uh, technology or tools are you looking to to um, estimate the the renovation cost and the after after repair market value? Like, uh, is is it MLS? Do you have other software? Do you have other research? How do you how do you determine what a condo is going to be worth after the repair? There, uh, okay. Uh, I think MLS is one of the key tools that I use to look at uh, what's available for me to buy, and also what is the market like. What are other units that are selling right now? So it gives give you a very good idea in terms of. Uh, the quantity and the transactional liquidity that I always refer to that uh, how this building perform or how this city perform in a in a in a general sense and there are other tools that give you like um, like uh, 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 in in uh, online throughout depending on your region whether you will be in Vancouver or in uh, Calgary or where you, you're in Ontario or the East Coast they have their local um, additional software websites that allow you to look at the past uh, uh, comparables in that sense and in the states even more abundant in terms of uh, tools that are available to you so but one thing that I would say is never um, replace that completely uh, without always friendly uh, realtor because you will still want your realtor to provide you with their professional opinion when it comes to comparable um, that they can pull from their database that uh, um, we general uh, investors don't have access to. So, so I would say uh, those tools that we mentioned online, uh, it's actually helps you to do while you're doing your research. But when you do your final step to verify that comparable is valid or not, I would still say go to your friendly neighbor um, router 
and uh, get the comparable from their uh, experience in that sense. So when I saw your presentation, I you know never thought of condo flipping before. When I saw your presentation, I was I was blown away, and I was like, "Well, this is great. You, you're not going to have a problem with the roof. You're not going to open the wall up and find asbestos. You're not going to all these issues you'd have flipping a regular house. You, you you don't have a lot of those with 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 a condo. But is there some unique challenges uh, with condo? You, you mentioned the time time in the elevator and the garbage, but is there any other unique challenges when flipping a condo versus doing a traditional home flip? I think water, the plumbing part would be one of the interesting aspects because different buildings have slightly different rules when it comes to uh, uh, how you handle the plumbing uh, renovations. Uh, some buildings actually requires you to use their on file licensed plumber uh, some allow you to use your own licensed plumber in that sense. So there are some subtlety in that. And then also the timing uh, of where you can do the water shutdown or uh, the, 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 the suspensions of the of water for the whole building. Because you now, not like in a house, you are turning off the water for this house. You're turning off this water potentially for this riser, like every single unit in this line, or potentially turning off the water for the whole building, for the hundreds of units that within this building. So there's a lot of planning and coordination uh, when it comes to, so this would be a great example of telling uh, what is the difference between like a condo and a traditional um, house flip per se. So having a general contractor that has experience working with uh, these type of buildings is, uh, I think it's a very important and crucial in that sense. Cool. So you mentioned you've you've done this hundreds or thousands of times. Do you, do you have any idea how many condos you've actually been involved in uh, in flipping? It's thousands. It's thousands. Thousands. I I thousands. I, I, I would not. I, you 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 have to buy me more beers before I tell you an exact number. And number is growing every day, as a matter of fact. So, yeah. So so what made you transition from from doing it yourself to now you're teaching others how to do it? Uh, what 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 was the the motivation? You know, if you're successful at what you do, what was the motivation to start teaching others your secrets? Actually, it's a little bit like I feel there's a void in me, and I don't know exactly why. Because I I usually push very hard in terms of my career and journey and my entrepreneurship in that sense, and and then I gotta start seeing uh, joining a lot of. Uh, um, Different training, mentoring program to enrich my knowledge over the over the over the years, and then I see there are students. Some of the students that uh, would join this mentoring program for the sake of education or entertainment, in the sense that they do nothing with it. So um, it might be many reasons within there. I mean, it might be the project is too big for some of the more um, stunning investor. Uh, it might be uh, too scary for them to be able to do so such big project in a sense. And then I say, I, I go look at it, um, and then I go, okay. So I see, as I mentioned earlier, I put together my presentation on the condo flipping co a program, and then I look. This can actually be done by anyone with any level of experience um, to start off whether that you are a beginner it will give you a full spectrum opportunities to touch on any real estate projects from start to beginning from the acquisition to the renovations to talking to general contractor to be able to talk to staging talk to designer and then talk to your selling agents and every aspects of a of a real estate project you'll be able to expose to a um, to it to gain experience to it and in a reasonably confined and safe space so that they can accumulate their experience for, for real estate investors who are just starting. Even for experienced real estate investor, it's still a good cash flow opportunity strategy in the sense that if you have big projects in between big projects, you can do, still do a couple of flips like this to increase the cash flow that you're having, right? I mean, we, we all know that those big projects, those 50 units building don't come don't, you, you don't buy that every day, right? Like you buy that opportunistically in a, a certain period of time. Some might do it more frequent than others, but 
but still in between those uh, um, uh, due diligence period then you could do some flips to uh, enrich your cash flow situation so from beginner to experienced investor I, I feel that this knowledge can actually I'm very sure that this knowledge can actually help them all of them um, so so I want to start that sharing and be able to make people success and get out of the red race and also improve their financial situation the one more thing that I want to mention is that along my way I mentioned I, I, I learned from many mentorship program in the sense that people selflessly share information with me to make who I am today right so I feel like that it's my time to I'm very honored and uh, be able to um, grateful to be able to share back my knowledge to help the community to grow and to enrich um, everyone's involved in it to to be successful so that's kind of the reason why I I choose down the path to uh, pay back uh, to the real estate investor community well thank you for thank you for that is there any um, like permitting involved when you do a renovation on a condo? Like sometimes on a house, you get you need permits and stuff to do certain renovations. Is there any type of permitting or special uh, approvals from the city that you have to get? Um, in terms of uh, depending on that would be depending on your renovation scope, right? So if uh, if the there is structural involved, which very unlikely in the condo situation, um, but then then for sure you need an engineer involved, you need to get the permit involved, right? Uh, and then if the, uh, also from a condo management board uh, requirement perspective, they might or they might not require you uh, in terms of uh, what type of, depending on what types of work that you're doing, uh, whether that needs to be uh, permitted or not. And also it's also depending on the regions. I understand that from Vancouver standpoint, they have more strict uh, uh, legislation when it comes to uh, permit require uh, requirements from that standpoint so you do need to uh, localize the requirement in that sense there's no a general rule of thumb but for things like uh, very cosmetic I'm replacing a, a, a kitchen cabinet or I'm painting the unit there is no need for re uh, permit requirement per se uh, and that's kind of would be my general comments on this particular topic okay and then um... So, so pre-construction uh, is is a completely different uh, ball of wax than than the condo flipping, um, but with interest rates uh, where they are today, much higher than they were a couple of years ago, is there a fear that the condo market may drop? You have a lot of people with these pre-constructions that maybe aren't going to be able to close at, at today's interest rates. Are you fearful of a glut of condos coming to market, and that'll bring down the price of all condos? Or is it just night and day when you look at a, a condo flip versus uh, the, all the pre-constructions that have been in the process of being built the last number of years? Wow, Darren, that's a fantastic question. Um, and there is a multi facets answers to it. Run, first of all, I want to tackle your comment about pre-construction and condo flip program. Um, pre-construction, typically, I would say that the timeline-wise, it takes about four to six years to from the perch from the time you purchase to the time you actually take occupancy in a typical condo flip program we're talking about four to six months so remember four to six months compared to four to six years so there's a lot more control in terms of uh, uh, timeline per se in the in the in these two different category of investing so you have less exposure to the time variance and the market fluctuation in a sense so obviously you have much less control what happens five years down the road and maybe in if we talk about today's term what happened five years ago when someone buy a pre-construction uh, condo and now with the current market downtrend and with the interest rate so high if they were to close today or in the next few months they might be ending up with a situation that they are, it's concerning to them. They might not be able to get the appraised value um, that they thought they could and in ending up having to uh, give in more equity in order to close the property. And the uh, cash flow analysis that you might have in the, in the beginning when you purchased five years ago now might no longer be valid. Um, so, so you're exposed to more 
fluctuation and the timeline is long so you have much less control um, in my opinion in terms of condo flip program because it's so quick in in such a uh, four to six months period of time uh, obviously because just by the nature of the time horizon the exposed to market fluctuation is less relatively speaking I'm not saying that is there's no market fluctuation but but it's much less when you compare four to six months to four to six years in that sense and uh, the other aspects is that because the way I manage the way I do it on a, I encourage that you treat it as uh, operating business so you continuously buying and continuously doing the condo flip in the sense that you will dollar cost average um, the the opportunity that you have at hand because no one knows um, I, I always like to use this analogy oh the market is down I'm not buying oh the market is too hot I'm not buying Oh, the market is not rising then I'm not buying so so that means that you're not buying in any market um, in terms of uh, action taking uh, mentality so in instead of that experience in the last decades have told me um, I have seen my clients successfully buying in the worst market uh, the example that I can share is that uh, before COVID lockdown my client one of my clients bought like a, a, a condo at a negotiated best possible price that you can imagine before lockdown because everyone was scared no one's buying uh, they want to get rid of it before the lockdown because they can no longer show once the lockdown begins right so they he, he got a he got a hell of a deal um, in in buying that uh, acquiring that property and then during the lockdown uh, they they finished the renovations and as soon as they finished the renovations the lockdown ease up so it uh, continues to allow showing then the market jumps up because there's so much accumulated potential buyer during the lockdown they could not buy anything and the ones it's open up uh, everyone was looking for a move and they able to get the top dollar during that point in time so is there a perfect time no one has a crystal ball except maybe a uh, denchar but uh, um, but but the way I would look at it is you always look at today what makes sense today um, in terms of uh, it's a good value to buy and what today shows a comparable um, that would make this acquisition work in a, in a condo flip program uh, perspective and then if this work based on today's number then it will work uh, in the long run from my from my standpoint because fairly saying today I don't look at tomorrow's uh, potential uh, increase in the market value I look at today's comparable and the same on the same token I look I don't look at so much on the future decrease potentially so and fairly looking at it this way then I would be able to dollar cost average and weather out the, um, the opportunity as uh, as I mentioned earlier okay so what do you have a preference uh, do you like bachelors one bedroom two bedroom three bedroom or it really doesn't matter if it's a good deal it's a good deal what what do you is there is there one type or size of condo that you're you're more comfortable with you are really getting into all my secrets Darren <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy about it so uh, what typically works I find is uh, the two bedroom plus unit works best in my positive experience um, however that said though if there if you find a one bedroom that meets the criteria that I mentioned earlier it would it's still a good deal if as long as you can show solid comparables that makes this uh, opportunity works then uh, um, then then it will work uh, but that said I mean I would see from my experience most of the opportunity that uh, more probable can fit into the criteria of success I would say that they are they are bigger unit they are bigger unit because you have like uh, uh, multi generations that are who are living in there like with maybe with parents and children or maybe even uh, parents and uh, adult children in a sense that or maybe maybe a uh, three generations then then they have more uh, buying power um, from from my experience, from what I can see.
Okay. So can you can you give us an uh, an example like um, well actually have you have you have an example of one you bought how what you buy it for how much was the renovation um, and your total expenses and then what did you sell it for something you've done sort of in the past past year if you give us an example. Sure. Um, I think we like I mean one of the example uh, about eighteen months ago I would say that we bought it for. Five seventy, five hundred seventy thousand dollars, and then uh, we renovated for about uh, fifty-five thousand dollars in renovation cost, and uh, we ending up sold it for eight seventy thousand, eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars. That's uh, one of the best uh, um, example that uh, I have uh, done in the past eighteen months. But that said, though, don't expect every single one of them is like that. Because when I underwrite it, I still underwrite it like normal. I look at it. I usually target about um, thirty to fifty thousand dollars a project. But sometimes, because of the market, because of the design, because of the uh, community de uh, desire, uh, you might end up making a hundred k, a hundred fifty k, and and even more, uh, and two hundred k in that sense. And this in this particular case, the gross margin is three hundred thousand dollars. And then, if you net, we're talking about netting uh, uh, 170 uh, in in this particular project. Um, but I would we we refer back to my earlier comments. The dollar cost averaging aspects of it is is very important. The thing is, you wouldn't never experience opportunity like that if you're not in the market. It's just like the saying that if you're not in the ocean or in the river or in the lake, don't expect to be able to catch fish. <laughs> you're in dry land. You're not. You're not. You're not catching fish. If you are in the market, uh, con consistently doing it, you will experience such uh, project opportunities as you move as as you consist consistently pursuing um, this project. Okay. So, what would what advice would you give an aspiring investor who who is interested in condo flipping? What uh, what would the the best advice be get off your chair get out of your house go look at as many um, unit as you possibly can and do your research while I mean continues do your research online and uh, the last comment is find a community that can allow give you mentorship and get you uh, knowledge sharing because that is going to accelerate your learning and Avoiding mistakes that are very costly in your in your in your investing journey. Because if you can, one thing that I learned is is that if you can do something in six months, don't try to do it in a year, and vice versa. If you need to do it yourself, it might take you two to three years to to master certain things. By joining community and mentorship program, it will. Significantly reduce the timeline. To in 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 terms of years, it could be months, it could be weeks. Uh, I have seen successful example in that, in that sense because time is the only thing that nobody can buy, in my opinion. So and uh, and the ability to knowledge share and avoid mistake and get the contact of Rolodex of people that can in the uh, be helpful to help you when you come across the problems. Then uh, it's an inevitable advantage. Uh, it's a it's 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 definitely, in my opinion, it's an unfair advantage to people who don't have it. I love it. So that's that's great advice. Is there anything else um, anything else I missed that you want to address with condo flipping before we wrap up here? Well, I would uh, I would say that uh, one thing that I would say is please reach out to. Uh, me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, if you have any questions or interest in the condo flipping area, I I will share with Darren afterwards. Uh, uh, in terms of my contact information and also uh, information about my future courses that I would be offering to the real estate community. So and uh, thank you, Darren, for having me today. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, we'll put all those links down below. I encourage you to, to, to follow Simon, learn more. He's just a, the absolute condo king. 
I hear he wants to be called the condo prince because he's just a young fellow, but uh, he's known as the condo king. Check him out. The links are below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to this podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. If you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. And if you want more information, check out our website, controlandcompound.com, and you can sign up for an education session with one of our wealth coaches.